Digimon, being a long-running anime series slash toy commercial, obviously had to pump out a new electronic toy each series, sometimes even multiple, and the in-universe Digivice was perfect for that. Throughout the years, and throughout multiple different Digimon universes, we've seen different Digivice get released. Mostly, they are pedometer quest-based toys, but occasionally they're ones that are released that strayed from the usual mechanics. So let's go over the history of all the Digivice releases throughout the franchise. Now before I get into it, I already did a video going over the history of the virtual pets, which typically are separate from the Digivices. Virtual pets being your traditional, you have to feed them, you put them to bed, they evolve kind of as they grow up, as they get older, the longer you run it, it evolves and then it eventually dies. That's a virtual pet, something that is basically... Uh, requiring you to pay attention to it all the time. You can't just leave it on the table and then pick it up a few days later and everything's the same like you can with most of the Digivices. Now, as I mentioned in my Virtual Pet History video, there is some overlap where the Digivice release is also a Virtual Pet, and I will go over that and address that, but typically the Digivices are the pedometer quest-based toys. Now what these are is that you typically are given a, uh, a character to choose from, usually a Digimon, from the selection of partner Digimon for that series, and you select that one, and then you effectively have to deplete a step count and fight enemies as you go, and then when that step count hits zero, you have to defeat a boss. And that is what a pedometer quest-based toy is, and as I mentioned, the majority of the Digivice releases were these pedometer toys, sort of like gamified fitness. And that's most of them, but there are a few that actually did stray more into the virtual pet territory. So there is a small amount of overlap, and I'll mention that as we go, but I just thought I'd get that out of the way, that if you want me to talk about virtual pets, that was in my uh, history of Digimon virtual pets video, and they are different. I'm counting them as different as uh, this is for the Digivices, which typically, again, do tie in to the anime releases for the franchise. Also, I won't be spending too much time talking about the complete selection animation and the super complete selection animation, also known as CSA and SCSA. These are Digivices, but they but more or less are props. They're very cool. I've released videos on them before, uh, effectively... They are noisemakers, but they're more of the premium end of a noisemaker. They recite lines from the show, play music from the show, and the super editions, which have, at the time of recording this, only a D-Arc and D-Scanner exist, but we do know that there is meant to be an upcoming Super CSA D3 coming out at some point. So the super variants of these have more fit functionality and features, such as NFC functionality in the case of the D-Arc, but again, I won't be really talking about them too much. I'm more talking about the Digivice toys and the releases that came out alongside the uh, original airing of each series. And one more thing, there is one other Digivice slash virtual pet that I'm probably not going to be mentioning too much. I mentioned it in my virtual pet history video, and that is the Digimon D-Cyber. Now, this is both a virtual pet and a Digivice. It was a Digivice for a Manua, so that is, and I'm probably mispronouncing that because I've only ever actually read the term, I've never actually heard the term, but it's effectively the, a Chinese-released manga, so Chinese comics, basically. And D-Cyber was just a Manua that was released, and the Digivice in that was the D-Cyber, which it just looked like a blue flip phone. This is, of course, as I mentioned in my History of Digimon Virtual Pets, a Bandai Asia release of the Pendulum X. has a more or less the same functionality, just in a different shell, and was then used as a Digivice. So I won't be talking about that because it doesn't really tie into the anime line of Digivices, but I guess just a quick honourable mention that the D-Cyber does exist. 
And one more special exception, I guess, is that the Digimon Neo exists, which is in the same shell as the Digimon Pendulum Cycle. Yep, it's another Bandai Asia one, because Bandai Asia was a little bit strange. Two versions were released, you can actually see it behind me there. That's the version 2 Neo, the version 1 Neo off screen beside it. The version 1 Neo had Digimon from Digimon Adventure, while the version 2 Neo had Digimon from Digimon Data Squad. These are Digivices in terms of they are the pedometer quest-based functionality, but they're not actually Digivices as they don't appear as a Digivice in any series, but the gameplay is the same as a pedometer quest-based toy. <sighs> And then there's one more thing that I that I w w will address uh, before I get into the full history. So there are quite a few differences that I'll mention as I go along between the Japanese releases and the English releases. The English releases tend to be more complete. You basically buy the thing and you don't need to connect it to anything. You don't need any other versions to unlock any other characters that are available on that. Everything is already there. You don't need to unlock anything except by obviously completing the game. That's cool and that's most of the English releases. However, the Japanese releases typically require you to own other or, or have friends who have other Digivices and... In addition to this, tend to also be compatible with other toys from the Digimon franchise, like, for example, the D3, you can connect to the Wonder Swan, the D-Terminal, and the other, other D3s, obviously. But the bad thing is, and because you think, oh, that's really good, it connects to lots of different things. The bad thing there is that, unfortunately, it means that you need to own those in order to unlock everything, which is a little bit of a shame. There's also the fact that the Digivice releases in Japan tend to split the rosters across each version. So if, again, to the D3, which is Season 2's Digivice, Digimon Adventure Zero Two, it had the version 1, which was Vmon and Wormmon's evolutions, then the version 2 was Hawkmon and Tailmon's evolutions, and the version 3 was Patamon and Armadillamon's evolutions. So... The English version of the D3, all of the Zero Two Digimon were available on the version 1. The version 2, I believe, added Terium onto that roster, and then the version 3 added the Adventure 1999 Digimon to that roster. So, a little bit of a weirdness there. Personally, I prefer the English versions for most of the releases, but this isn't an opinion piece. I've done videos on... The difference between a lot of them, like the Data Link and IC, for example, which is basically the only case where I prefer the Japanese version. Mostly I prefer the English version, but that's a matter of opinion. So that is something that uh, I just wanted to get out of the way to explain. And with that, like, almost 10 minute ramble of uh, preamble, I guess, we can finally get on to the history. And we start off with the airing of Digimon Adventure in 1999. So this is the original Digivice, which was released in Japan in 1999, with the version 15th, which was released for the 15th anniversary, releasing to include the tri-characters in 2014, and then the version complete, releasing in 2021 to include Kazuna characters. The first version, which was released in 1999, only had the seven partner Digimon, but the second version, released a few months later, included Tailmon, and each Digimon could only evolve to Perfect on the version 1 and 2, with the exception of Tailmon, who could evolve to Holydramon. Connecting to the Digimon Analyzer with the Japanese release would result in unlocking Vdramon. The English release had a version 1, 2, and 2.5, and later versions included the Megaforms from the anime. The Japanese release had a pretty cool feature where you could unlock other partner Digimon by being near radio waves, you could just unlock them as you progress in the English release. So that was the first Digivice. It is commonly, and incorrectly, but commonly enough, called the D2. That's not its official name, but the name has existed long enough in the fandom and the community of people who just like Digimon toys that it's become like a non an unofficial, but fanon, I guess, uh, name for it. 
but it is traditionally just called the Digivice without any numbers or anything next to it, but people do commonly call this the D2. Even though it's incorrect, it's effectively become kind of like Fanon, so that exists. And then the following year, in the year 2000, and alongside the airing of Digimon Adventure 02, which was Digimon's second season, the D3 released with three versions in June, September, and then a version 3 releasing in December. We also had a version 15th for this as well, with upgraded Digimon featuring it, and also it was all combined into one, rather than not having the the Digimon partners split amongst three versions. And again, the Japanese version utilised being near radio waves to unlock other partner Digimon. It also had a little slot on the side where you could connect it up to your Wonderswan via a proprietary cable, so that's pretty cool. And the Japanese release, and this is a feature I do like from the Japanese version, also allowed Digimon to use Digimentals that they didn't get to use in the show, such as, for example, my personal favourite, Hawkmon using the Digimental of Friendship to become Rinkmon, who is just super cool. And then, of course, in 2001, we have Digimon's third season, Digimon Tamers releasing, and we got the D-Power, or D-Arc, as it's called in Japan. Now, this, <laughs> this release, for some reason, got very different releases depending on where you were in the world. I've gone over the US release, uh, it has it got a computer game, so it had a fairly unique version. You connect it up to a computer using a cable and a CD that's bundled alongside it, and yeah, I've done a video on this, so if you want more information about this game, check it out. There is obviously a portion of this game that I don't have footage on, and it's the online portion because servers have been closed, but still a pretty cool release. And then Asia got three versions, which is pretty cool as well, which had various other characters that did or did not appear in the anime, but that was just Bandai Asia for you, and Europe only got the version 1 that Bandai Asia released. Obviously, Australia also got the Bandai Asia releases because we got a lot of Bandai releases back in the day. The Japanese version also allowed you to input a code, which was pretty cool, before swiping a card to help determine which card was being used, and again, the Japanese version split out what Digimon you could have depending on what Digivice, so you could only have Gilmon on the Takato D-Arc. You could only have Renamon on the Blue Rookie D-Arc. And then, of course, we had a version 15th released in 2017, which was the last version 15th for a Digivice. One was expected for uh, uh, Frontier and onwards, but... We never got that. Speaking of which, 2002, we got the release of the D-Scanner, or Detector, as it's known in the English release. And while the Detector itself was mostly a typical, typical, that's a new word, typical pedometer quest-based toy like in previous releases, so the Digivice D3 and D-Power were all the pedometer quest-based devices, typically slash typically, or whatever I just said, and with the exception being that on the D-scanner, or detector rather, you would pick a human child rather than one of the partner Digimon, otherwise very typical, or whatever I said, uh, to the other previous releases. However, the Japanese release, the D-scanner, had no pedometer or quest functionality and was just a collect-a-thon device where you had to collect and raise Digimon by scanning barcodes. There was also a pretty cool tie-in with the Pendulum Progress, which was released alongside it, where you could jogress to between the, the Digimon that you had on the D-Scanner and the Progress, so that's pretty cool. It was nice that it linked up to the Virtual Pets a little bit more, but otherwise, I th this is a big example of how different the English releases can be from the Japanese ones and typically why I prefer the English version, because the, I like I like the, the quest-based pedometers, so sue me. And then a little bit of a break for a few years, 2006 we had Data Squad slash Savers, and we got the Digivice release of the IC and Burst, or Data Link as it was known in the English version. Now, neither of these were typical. <laughs> I'm just going to keep on saying typical now, I just think that's, I don't know why, that's just joyous. Anyway, uh, while neither were typical uh, pedometer quest-based toys, they were both fairly different. So first of all, the IC was a virtual pet. It was your traditional virtual pet, 
but it was just in the shape of a Digivice, and you would raise Digimon from that season, and of course other Digimon would be slotted in too, but otherwise traditional virtual pet. And then we had the English release Data Link, which had aspects from the IC, but it was not a virtual pet, it was just a quest-based pedometer with a Digimon that kind of walked across the screen with some minor pseudo-virtual pet elements. And then another few year break, in 2010, we saw Digimon Fusion slash Cross Wars, and we had the Cross Loader, which was the first colour screen Digimon electronic toy release, and it used SD cards for extra content, but you could actually put MP3s on these SD cards and you could listen to MP3s, so that was a pretty cool feature and functionality. There was also the Asian released Fusion Loader, which was your more typical monochrome display quest based pedometer toy. And then the US got a release, which is also behind me there. And this was just like, imagine a CSA, but like only 10% of the, uh, the budget. So it was just a sound maker toy and more of a prop than a game, but at least it was released, I guess. And then, a few years later, 2016, we had Digimon Universe, Apply Monsters, my favourite series, and we had the Digivice called the Apply Drive, and then later on the Apply Drive Duo in 2017. These used chips that you could get in gacha machines or just like little packs, and it was another budget CSA similar to the Fusion Loader, but with a little bit more depth, you could app link, and the funny thing is with this release, because it came out just as the series was airing, if you happen to get the chips to insert from Dig from Atmon rather, and you kept on inserting them and doing app links, it would actually spoil uh, did, uh, uh, upcoming Atmon that hadn't debuted yet. So that was kind of funny to mess around with while the series was still airing. There wasn't a quest based or virtual pet toy alongside this release, except for the Seven Cone Band, which I should do a video on sometime because it does sort of fill that gap of being the uh, the quest based slash virtual pet esque uh, release for that series. And then another bit of a break until 2020, where we had the Digimon Adventure colon slash the reboot slash Digimon Adventure 2020, whatever you want to call it. And it was called the Digivice colon. Yep, that's the name. It's Digivice, then the symbol colon. And it was another quest base, but without a pedometer, which it was fine. You just selected each area rather than walking through it. It was fine. I played it. There was a, there were a few spoilers for the show, funnily enough, but other things just never appeared in the show that appeared on it. So it was kind of just, it, it was there. It, it was a fun little prop and it lit up with nice colors. So it was pretty at least. And then in 2021, we had the Vital Bracelet, which later appeared in the manga Digimon Dreamers, which you can currently read for free on Digimon.net, and it's more or less the Digivice. And then, of course, later on we had in 2021, also just at the end of it, we had the Digivice V, which, again, from the Vital Bracelet VB, it was a combination between G Gamified Fitness, uh, for some reason my mouth did not want to say gamified there, like the quest-based pedometer toys and virtual pets. And then in 2022, we got an upgrade called the Digivice Dual V, which was the upgraded Digivice for the rest of Ghost Game. And then in 2023, Digimon Seekers also used the BE, which the Dual V was, as the Digivice for the web novel. Again, this can also be read for free on Digimon.net. It is a web novel. Digimon Dreamers is a manga. And they're both available free and legal on Digimon.net. Also, more importantly, in English. So, thumbs up to that. Now, the main thing I want to point out about these releases before I wrap up is the fact that for the first time in several years, we have the same dis like design and model for the Digivice. Usually each series, which at the very start was one per year, would have a fairly different design for each Digivice. So we had the Digivice, the D3, the D-Arc, the D-Scanner, the IC, the Fusion Loader, the uh, Apply Drive. Those were all different. And then the Digivice Colin, we had very different Digivices. However, we've had more or less the same Digivice 
in use from 2021 with Digimon Dreamers and Ghost Game. And we have that same Digivice in Digimon Seekers with the Digimon Linker Band, which is just the VB, but with a different band attached. So as of recording that, that's it for the history of the Digimon Digivices. Let me know your thoughts, comments, questions, and if I've forgotten anything, please call me out. Uh, please also, if I'm mispronouncing uh, Manwa, please tell me so I can stop mispronouncing it, because if I'm saying it incorrectly all the time, I'm going to seem like a complete nonce, and I don't want to be that, so please name and shame me in the comment section below and let me know if I've forgotten anything or if you have any questions about any of these releases. Subscribe if you haven't already and if you have subscribed, tell your friends, tell your families, tell your neighbours. Like this video for the Digivice history behind me and of course I will see you on the next video. Bye!